Welcome to Thick Boy Fight Club. I'm your Balkan boy. I'm Andrew the Beast Tyson. And today our guest is creator of Bearded Bites, uh, nutrition coach. Um, everybody here on the circuit knows him, professional fighter, uh, Matt Special. But um, before we get started, sir, the Thick Boy Fight Club shout out uh, for the restaurants of the week. Uh, mine's is Tan Yom. It's a, it's a Thai spot on Bloor uh, and... Uh, Blue and Dundas, it's owned by like uh, just a couple and they only have like three things on the menu. It's two things are always consistent, chicken and rice and cow soy. And the rest is like a chef specialty. And it's like probably the most authentic Thai food you can get in the city. It's like there's so many great things there. The coconut balls, the mango sticky rice. Um, it, it's really bomb. Uh, so for me, same energy as always. I'm picking Lakeshore Tobacco again. Uh, Simon Sushi, another spot that's uh, helped us out during our thick boy fight nights um amazing different type of specialty sushis they have also a bunch of like appetizer platters regular plates as well of uh, really good cost on uber eats doordash right there on lakeshore uh, in etobicoke near me uh like i said best food in the cities in etobicoke especially for uber eats so uh, simon sushi is my spot all right i'm gonna have to go with a uh, spot down in brampton where i used to live i gotta go with uh, segovia coffee shop they got probably some of the best coffee they got this amazing Nutella cookie now, and they got a nice beef brisket uh, sandwich, which I know I'm saying all these to you, and I don't know it sucks because you're cutting weight right now, but yeah, they got some good stuff down there. Where, where's the spot? Sandwich. I'm from Brampton. Yeah. I've never heard of uh, it. Coffee and beef brisket. Yeah, they, they opened up recently on um, Highway 10, uh, Maine, Maine and Queen. Maine and Queen. Oh, so Maine right downtown? Queen. Right downtown. So Cavia. Yeah, Segovia. Sokovia. Sokovia. Okay. Yeah, nice little, nice little spot, little, little family-run spot. Very oh, nice I people. Love, yeah, I you got to check like it that. out, man. That's where you love to tip sandwich. extra, you know? Yeah. Like, you're just like... Yeah, Matt, um, we couldn't wait to have you here because, like, every fighter, and especially with the with the Thick Boy Fight Club lifestyle, you know, we struggle with our relationship with food <laughs> and the way we, we bounce back and forth uh, in between fights and how, what we eat. But, um, you know... Um, what you've done in, in, in these last few years is really remarkable. Everybody's really using your services to cut weight. And um, it really the program really works. So um, I really just wanted, I, I think I got to say this first of all, is like the reason I, I chose Matt and the reason any fighter should choose Matt is because he cuts the weight. He, he it's not a he's not a weight cut coach that's not cutting the weight and not trying all this stuff on himself. He's going through the same kind of brutal weight cuts that we all do. And he's doing them scientifically and, and, and testing it on himself. So, yeah, man, can you, if you could just get into that. That was a, that was a beauty intro. Thank yeah. you. He's getting, good. he's getting good at this. Uh, really good, really good. Yeah, no, um, I I just basically, I jumped into it, man, because I was, uh, my mindset was I was basically tired of being tired. And what that means is as, as a competitor, man, like I was, I knew I wasn't eating properly. I, there was something up years ago, and I just wanted to, I wanted to figure it out. I already had a guy that was kind of helping me a little bit, but then I said, you know what, I, I gotta know this for myself. So then I started, I started doing some of the research, and the minute I started doing some of the research, certifications, all that stuff, looking up online, I, it just hit. Like, I just, I became addicted to this stuff. And then from there, I just went from just regular nutrition, and then getting into the, um, the fight prep, weight cutting and then i thought the the rehydration part was incredible like how they did that was just on another level and i and i as soon as i started listening to that and started reading up on that i said i gotta do this 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 is this is what i need to do because nobody around here is doing it i think that's what i'm most excited to try in in this fight um um with you is like the rehydration process because that's an i think a lot of fighters mess that part up yeah. they maybe have a successful weight cut and they have a terrible rehydration process and they're just not performing regardless that they made the weight and and yeah man like um keep going sorry yeah no uh and yeah you hit he hit the nail on the head when it comes to the rehydration man that's what that's the problem anyone can cut the weight you know what it it, it, it takes like mental toughness to get that weight down the biggest thing that people don't understand it's that rehydration that recovery and man most people they they get on the scales and i see i see it firsthand i'm watching them and I'm, if they're not my client if i don't know them that well i'm like yeah like go do your thing but i see guys get off the scales and they're just taking down food whatever they see they're just like i want this i want that you know like they'll they'll go to like buffets and they'll start going we've man we've all done that yeah, <laughs> yeah. i've done that too course, man. Yeah, i've done course. that too that was my first fight we went yeah. right to an all-american i was in ohio all-american restaurant just 
eat steaks and all this like terrible food, yeah. pasta, bread, and vomit before the fight and like have diarrhea before the fight and still go, you know what I mean? Like, well, you, you can attest this, and I've, I've talked to him about this now, is a lot of guys confuse how heavy they are the next day with rehydration. So they automatically assume that if they gain 20 pounds, that they rehydrate properly on big. And it's like, well, yeah, you're heavier, but like you're not actually hydrated. You're not actually performing at peak, right? So can you kind of get into it? Because I think a lot of guys, I remember I used to confuse that. I just used to look at the skill. If I gained 20 pounds, I, I was a success. Like, I was like, all right, I'm huge. I'm going to... Yeah, yeah. Not really... Not until I got older, I realized, like, oh, like, there's a difference between being heavy and hydrated. Can you kind of get into, like, maybe what you kind of learned about that difference? Yeah, no, it's... You know what? It's it's the true... It's basically your, your training camp weight. And how I like to look at it is, like, maybe a couple weeks before the weigh-in, that should be the weight that you walk into the fight at. Okay, and you you shouldn't be any higher. And like you said, exactly. you said you said you was like, oh, most guys love when they get they get super big. Oh, that was my thing. Yeah. I used to try to like eat more. Like I must be bigger. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. stuff. It literally down, wasn't man. even hungry. And yeah. it was the idea. I would be heavier bigger. on fight day than I was during camp. Uh, uh, leading up to like the last week of camp. And you know what most people don't understand, and like I hope people start getting this, is that all through fight week you're cutting a copious amount of weight. You're, you're taking down your food volume. So your bo- for about five to six days, your, your digestive system is not like feeling out like that much food volume. All right. Let's say, let's say most people, actually a lot of people that I know, they, they'll eat like, they'll take down maybe each day, like 12, 1300 calories. If they really have to cut the weight each day yeah. on fight week. Okay, great. And then they weigh in. And then in that 24 to 30 hour period, these guys will smash 4,000 <laughs> calories. So, so let's look at that. Let's look at that. Let's it's, look at that. Yeah. So, so you, you're, you're, you're on a daily basis, you're doing 1200 calories. Okay. So your body's understanding, okay, it's 1200. We're good, man. We're good. And then you bombard this yeah. shit with 4,000. So that, that's the whole thing with digestion. That's whole. you'll start to feel it in like your, um, like just your, your GI tract, yeah. like your gut. That's why you and get And digestion like, takes so much energy. It does, man. You're going to take away from I mean, the performance yeah. of the fight. You'll get flagellants too. Like you'll have to, you'll, you'll crap a lot. You will crap constantly. And it's, it's terrible, man. Yeah. Well, cause like I said, like, I think especially guys who come from the a wrestling background that then go into MMA, all old school wrestlers, you can test, we cut weight, like the worst way we rehydrate yeah. the worst way. Yeah. And it's only recently that, you know, people are starting to learn the science. So for you, like, what was like, was it a bad weight cut specifically that did this to you? Was it watching some like, what made you be like, okay, I have to go research this myself. And what were some of the things you used? Like, what were some of the things you researched initially that kind of started you on this path? So the biggest one, the biggest eye opener is when I did a, um, I did an eight man tournament, uh, one night, uh, for kickboxing. Yeah. So I, I went from, I think like six weeks, I had my nutritionist at the time help me get down. Uh, but he was new to this as well. So we got down from 182 to 155. Oh, wow, so, a cut. yeah, so I, I got it down and then like, I, like, same thing, man. I, I was done. I was done the weigh in and I just started eating. Of course. I was, I took down a village. 27 pounds. Yeah. Right. I took down what a village. What did you village. go eat? Do you remember what, do you remember what you uh, went and ate? Oh man. Like we ju- I just, I was eating, uh, I was eating muffins, uh, donuts, muffins, oh, muffins donuts, so even cookies. Worse, worse. And then I was, and then yes, yeah, so I was having the meals like your pastas and your rices, but I was just over consuming. I was actually over consuming on fats. I was putting too much peanut butter on the breads. And I was like, you don't need that much fat. You don't need that much protein post weigh in. Well, you and need that's very carbs. interesting that you've been telling me because I always thought like I definitely need uh, protein and fat and all the macronutrients. But really, before the five after weight cut, you want to just load up on the carbs. Yeah, you need simple carbs, man. You need one thing that's going to help your body go. You're like a vehicle, man. So what, what's going to help you go? What, what do you need is simple carbs. You need white breads, white rices, white potatoes, rice cakes, all that good stuff that is going to give your body immediate energy. And that things, things like that, even Gatorades, that's the shit we want, man. Yeah, when you're so doing we, extreme weight cut. We like put that. in that. We put that. And you know what? You add in protein. You add in fats for a little diversity in the plate because you're not just going to sit there, eat a whole big thing of rice. You want to just mix it up a bit. You want to make it look somewhat aesthetically it's, yeah, good looking. You're right? upset. Well, yeah. I got to, I, I, like, for the Trinidad fight, I went vegan and I felt better. But I feel like it was more like because I took out a lot of crap when I went, when I started eating like that for you, before you, the fight. Were, you were much leaner during that thing though. That and was then, a pretty um, long camp. Like yeah, that was a pretty and, easy wake up. And then now like at the most I would eat, I wouldn't even touch red meat before like a week before a fight and definitely not after a weight cut. You know, like I feel like it would just be too heavy, but I don't know. What, what, what do you think? Yeah, I know. We, we, we primarily stay away from the, the red meat, like post weigh in. It's gonna, 
fully it'll take about 15 hours to digest so it's like you don't want to put your body through that i tell all the guys i'm like let's stick with the lean meats i'll never put like a restriction but i, I always say recommendation so i've heard red meat can even take longer though or yeah, well, is it now is 15 it, 18 now is it say. digesting or is it actually what you get out of it because i can't remember i heard like with red meat you don't actually get all the nutrients for like a few days like now is that I just the difference between nutrients and just digest like i think it's the, just from what i understand my, yeah. my scope of knowledge is just the digestion part yeah it takes just a long take time a overall bit. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you would say like stick to chicken stick to fish salmon yeah a good a good um a good piece of salmon on weigh-in day it would be nice uh just because just because a little bit of the fats it has and then you're going to be sleeping for a good seven eight hours that's perfect for you over over the night overnight and then when you get up that's when you kind of more indulge your fight day you start indulging in once again your simple carbs you can you can put down some pancakes maybe if you can handle that right put a little bit of pancakes down and then you start keep going you keep with the right races and all that kind of stuff so going back to the story what i was saying is just that um after that after the after the weight cut after all that i was eating too much crap so my main my ideal weight to train at during that camp is about 172 171 I jumped back up to 179. Yeah, see, and I, that, guys, think, I used to think that was a good thing. Mm-hmm. I used to literally associate that with the like I was bigger than I'm like I'm even bigger and stronger <laughs> like, and I used to associate that with being. Yeah, it's literally just food heavy in your stomach. That's yeah. not gonna help you at all for the fight. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes you know what? Maybe I have a little bit of body dysmorphia, so if I don't look a little bit ripped, yeah, I walk in there a little bloated. I'm like. Oh my god, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Yeah, I didn't drink. I need to do some uh, sit ups, man. (laughs) Shit. No, but that's a meme, right? So I went in there a little bit bloated, a little gassy, and I was just, I didn't feel good. Like, I didn't feel right. I went in there. I still, like, I still performed. I did three fights one night. It was the hardest thing in my life. Did you try to rub it out? No, 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 I didn't. No, I didn't do that. I just, I, you know what? I, I made peace with it. I was like, I'm an idiot. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. I just hope I don't shit all over this ring. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you bring up the body dysmorphia thing because obviously this all started off with the idea of this kind of twisted relationship between fighters and all, any combat athlete, any. whether it's wrestler and food. And normal right? people, man. Yeah, are you and, kidding? Like, and you it's know? so funny when you bring that up, like, because especially with this whole wake up thing, like, I know so many fighters who this whole idea of being as big as you can on fight, but then that same thing happens where I've seen guys literally. Like they're like depressed by the you know the end of the night. It's like, bro, you still gotta fight tomorrow. Like it's like this kind of they're fat and they kind of like are disappointed like immediately, right? Oh, so man. it's like funny that you actually use that terminology because like I think that's more of a thing that most fighters would like to. Man, admit. you gotta be like, so disciplined because you think that it's like you're good to go after the weigh-in. It's like now I've got the green light to do whatever I want, but like you gotta really stay disciplined. Oh, I've seen guys literally like they look sad and it's like I go, like they you know a lot of times your eyes are bigger than your actual. Appetite, oh, right? I've everyone's seen this done guy. that. We've all done oh that, right? Oh my god! Like, where you like, worse. where you go to the store <laughs> so and you like buy up so many things, and you're like, I'm not even gonna consume. Half <laughs> and then he this. drinks like a little bit of his magic, whatever his Gatorade thing, and then he doesn't like eat any of the food. I've watched him do that multiple times. And not even during like the weight cuts or fights. You got to think about like even if we go into the gym, we haven't seen our coach in like a week. And you know what? <laughs> with 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 martial art gyms, we're close. We're like a family. We're like a brotherhood, right? Yeah. And we walk in. There's been many times I'll walk into the gym. My coach will look at me and be like. You haven't missed the fucking meal, have you? Yeah, dude. Hey, do you know if I went up five pounds? You'd be look, look at your ankles, bro. Look we at your ankles. Each other. It's, Y'all look like a pregnant chick. I was like, bad. oh no. It's bad. We all we all have the the, the relationship with the scale. We yeah. all we all tease each other and weigh each other after the practice. Oh, we're always so. arguing after practice about who's heavier. It's like a thing for like it's like the exact opposite of being like in a bodybuilder gym where everyone's lying about being heavier. Everyone in a martial arts gym is lighter. Everyone's ten pounds lighter than they were. We all lie. Oh, where are these five pounds I'm, come I'm from? Right now. Like, and, and, if, and if and if and if there's no scale, it's almost like. Hey man, what's your weight right now? I'm like, yo, I'm in between, give or take, 150 to about 205. <laughs> yeah. In the ballpark. Oh, oh, yeah. the ballpark. We were doing this yesterday, like touch each other, like, how much do you weigh? You look big. Like <laughs> So like what was uh what was some of the first material that you got into that kind of like the first things you used to research that kind of got so you? Like, into yeah, this right path? after that kickboxing tournament, were you like the problem in this fight was the weight cut? Did you know right away? Yeah, and, and then I just I started looking up uh, just little certifications I can do online. I'm like, I got to start somewhere. Even though certifications online for nutritionists is a little bit looked down upon because dietitians hate when nutritionists start spouting off shit because they didn't do the schooling that dietitians did, right? Dietitians go four years. Nutritionists, you can do like a fucking a Six weekend months, course. Yeah, or weekend like course a, yeah. yeah, some nutritionists like take a weekend course and get this <laughs> certification. Be like, whoa, great, bro. But no, so then I took a, I took a course, um, ESA, International Sports Science Association. I took that. And then right from there, I took that like a little bit after that tournament. And then I just started researching a little bit more. And I'm like, okay, now I understand the idea of what our body does 
with certain foods. What's it made for? What's our, what's carbs made for? What's fats, what's protein, what the fiber does for you and your appetite, all that good stuff. I'm like, that's great. I'm like, now I want to know about the good shit. Yeah. Now I want to know what they, these guys fucking do during the weight cut. And then I started researching a lot of, st- a lot of stuff. And then I, I stumbled upon George Lockhart. So George Lockhart is the weight cutting rehydration specialist for a lot of the guys in the UFC at the time. And it was Conor McGregor's, um, uh, nutritionist. Oh, okay, that's mm-hmm. what I'm yeah, yeah. So, so he's like he, him and Mike Doce are like the, probably the number. I've heard Mike Doce as much as I was hearing for a while. No, Lockhart was taken over. Yeah, I kind of yeah. haven't heard about Doce in a while now. I remember he he's had a still lot actually he's still doing well. Like he's 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 in and out. Like he's he's still doing really well. Like yeah. he's, he's got his own podcast. He's doing like some good uh, yeah, some I knew good shit. Podcast. Yeah. So then I started researching him, and then like oh, then you can start uh, learning from these guys, from George and the, the other his business partner Dan. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I gotta fucking learn from these guys. I just gotta know. This is another step into what I have to understand and what I gotta yeah. learn. And then um. I basically kept, I was hounding him for about a year. Oh, really? About a year. And the good thing about it, like, I would, anytime I direct message him just for, like, some information, boom, this guy would instant message me back. That's, that's awesome. why from there, I saw the kind of care he took. That's why I kind of did that, too. I was like, yeah. you know what? From here on here on out, when I started Bearded Bites, anytime someone asks me a question, I'll fucking, I'll answer. Yeah. I, like, I'm not that important. Like, yeah. I don't, I never want to get too high where people are like, oh, I can't get to hold this guy. Yeah. He's too busy. Now, fuck that. I got you. Yeah. I'll, I'll help you out if you need it. So then he would always message me back every time I asked him a question. And then I was hounding him. George, when are you coming to Canada? I want to do this certification. I want to learn this yeah. shit. For about a year, he's like, oh, sorry, bro. That's how he talks. Like, sorry, man. Yeah, I'll be there. Don't worry. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, man. Dude, I don't know if you ever heard him talk. <laughs> he's got like a hilarious raspy. It's a, it's a funny voice. It's good. Yeah. It's, he's awesome. I always rip him for that. But, uh, but then, yeah, he's like, um, then finally, like it was a uh, one week. He's like, I see a post. We're going to Ottawa for certification. I was like, Fuck yeah, let's go. Yeah, so I yeah. call. I told my work. I was like, yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go for like three, four days. Leave me alone. So I just yeah. dipped. Go there. Went for there. Went to a chalet for a weekend. We learned the ins and outs about this whole weight cutting. They told us cool fucking stories about the guys in the UFC. Yeah. And then from there, I just I already had the bearded bites brand. But from there, I just was going. All right, let's go all in. That's oh, what so I you already had the brand at this before, time before I went. Yeah, before I went to uh, meet up with George and those guys oh, and wow. learn about this stuff. When so did I'm, you When did you uh, realize that this was going to be a business and you were going to do this for other fighters? Did you start that right away? Because initially it sounded like you were wanting to learn this stuff for yourself because you were you were fighting. Yeah, I I wanted to learn this stuff for myself. But You're then still I fighting. Just, yeah, and then I still then I, it started off as just nutri- being like a nutrition company for your general population. And it started off with my brother and my sister because it's one of those things you want to make a difference. You start with the people closest to you Amen. and then it spreads, right? As cheesy as that sounds. No, no, I, it, I, 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 I totally think, agree with that. I yeah. fully agree with that yeah. sentiment, yeah. So then I started with my brother and my sister. They killed him. My brother, within like seven, eight months, went from 270 to 210. My sister, oh, wow. we did. We had to do some like some weird, crazy shit with my sister. She uh, Metabolically, she wasn't all there. Like she, she messed herself up a little bit, so we had to go like a little bit of a reverse diet, bring her calories up high. Yeah. She gained a little bit of body fat, but then that was going to help create like a uh, foundation to bring the calories down. Yeah. She went, she dropped from about one thirty, no, one forty two to about one twenty four, one twenty three. Right, for a woman, that's a that's huge. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. Massive. Yeah. Massive. Yeah. So then from those two, and then it just started clicking and it just started spiraling from there and then i was just like okay now now i want to do this fight thing that's when i started researching the what do fighters need uh post weigh-in that's when i started researching then i got then i got in touch with uh, george and then i started mixing and matching with my training i started thinking about okay what what can i do with my training what can i give myself for training so i started giving myself certain foods certain meals before training post training and just started to like narrow down like my protein intake, my carbs, make sure my fats are at a specific level, obviously for my hormones. So I made sure that was happening. And then that's when I just started going, all right, let's help some fighters now. So I have a question because I've, this is actually something that's been brought up to me through kind of clients. Have you ever had anybody who's like a, a general fitness person who might do martial arts, who's ever asked you to put them through the same regimen you would for a, a fighter to see what can happen? Because I've had people ask me about that, like put me through a fight camp to see what I can wait. And I've asked the same with the nutrition thing. Have you ever had anybody do that? Because I've actually know people who've brought that up to me. And it's become, it seems like it's more and more a thing I hear where people want to like put themselves through the camp minus the fight. And it's like, I'm assuming this is I don't know who I don't know who would want to do Dude, that. You'd be actually very surprised. It's like, I'm kind of, sometimes I'm confused. I'm like, I don't, you know. You know we're all that, like, bro. we're all like, uh, who would no, want to do that? He, you oh, heard yeah. it before. Two months ago, two months ago, my yeah. brother goes, hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. And this is, yeah, this is not his voice, but this is how I impersonate him. But he's like, hey, man, 
I want to do this like weight cut. Let's just like I'll do the two months of just weight cutting, and then we'll do a water cut, fifteen pounds. I'm like, oh, he wants to do the water cut too. You want to do the water cut, oh, man? Why? He the water cut. I was like, you're not fucking doing that. You're why? not fucking doing that. For That's what? not happening. <laughs> like, there's no point. You're gonna see yourself shredded for a second, like that much, and then be he just wants the photos. Hey, you guys want the photos? Hey, man. Yeah, just put it over your bedroom. Yeah. That's a good. Yeah. Point. So he actually wanted to he, do. He wanted because he sees what I go through, and then he started seeing that for me. The weight cuts became fun and like nothing. Well, there is a level of I think you can yeah because you're this. you're you're becoming a master at your craft and you you know what I mean and it's like becoming more fun doing it like probably because you're getting more success every time. I love it. Like it's how so many easy. how many fighters have, would you say you've worked with now? I've lost count. <laughs> uh, it's got to be at least over like over thirty to forty. That's good. In in, in a span yeah. of two years. Yeah, we're talking like professional MMA fighters, um, some kickboxers as well, right? And like. It's it's everyone's pretty using your service. You even get guys that call you like last minute, like I weigh this much. Can Help you me. get me fucking down? Help me. <laughs> I know I should have called you before, but uh, <laughs> I know I should have called if you before. I get a guy. I know I've had this before. I get a guy that called because there's so many questions. It's like a loaded question. It's yeah. like it's like when someone asks you, "Hey man, I need some. Tell me how to eat healthy." I'm like, <laughs> "What the fuck does that even mean?" I was like, "How am I supposed to tell you? Like, should I eat a salad to be healthy?" I'm like. Depends. Yeah, it depends on what your goal is. What else are you eating? What <laughs> yeah. are we doing? What's your work rate? How yeah. are we doing this? Do you have any like inconsistencies or intolerances I should know yeah, about? Yeah, such a loaded question. So then, when, with with fighters, they go, "Man, uh, oh man, I need to lose some weight, man. I got a week." I'm like, "Okay, what are you eating now?" Oh, I haven't been eating carbs for about three months. <laughs> Fuck. So I'm already running at that's, a low. That's a, that's a form of dehydration. They don't people don't realize. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, cool. This is the number one thing too. This is the number one question I ask everyone now. It's my number one. I go, hey man, what's your salt intake like? And for some reason, people think it's like a badge of honor. It's like I don't eat any salt. Yeah, they don't. Realize like, I've been salting my need, food like energy. crazy they don't because of what it. you said. They don't realize we need that. It. Yeah. We need it for muscle contraction. We need it for fluid balance. We need that shit. But see, this is all. I don't have a meal. Like, I just salt my water. Yeah, growing up as a wrestler, these are all things that we used to think was normal. Like it used to be a thing to not drink water. Like. Literally, the idea of not drinking water the day it was like yeah. the day I used to win. drink distilled water. Yeah, we thought that's what you did, and then you go sweat in a sauna and some jump like, and like now I think about it, I was like, oh my god, like to do that at yeah. like 15, 16, Well, everything 17. changes. Even when I learned the bathtub and the Eskimo trick, I'm like, oh, this is way easier, way, way better than sitting, than than sitting in a sauna. Right. I was just, I would just fall asleep in the Eskimo suit and like in an hour, like wake up and like be like two, three pounds li lighter every time. Yeah. And you're just like. I could do this, you know? Yeah, it's, it's a huge difference. So how, how long has this been going for you? Like, when did this, like, when was that bad wake up? Do you remember, like, what year was that? It had to be, like, probably four, four or five years ago. So yeah. then that's when, remember, like, after that, I started dabbling a little bit. But then I just, like, I, I went full board, full board when I started getting into the um, the fighters. Like, when I started researching the fighters and the rehydration. So full, full board, I think it's got to be two and a half years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you're actually, you did this around this time where this has become a huge conversation, especially with one, about a lot of these fighters moving up in weight class. And specifically, I know one FC has that kind of restriction they do. They have a hydration, hydration test. Hydration restriction. They um, have hydration tests. So they test you so that you can't be cutting, and you can't cut a certain amount of weight. They do like a percentage thing. But even Matt was telling me that there is a percentage number that um, that is, seems to be optimal, right? And you don't want to, and we've all been cutting more than that. Realistically, so yeah. what, what's your opinion on what's been happening with a lot of fights? Because there seems to be a lot of success we're seeing from guys going up. Uh, your Rafael dos Santos is your um, Calvin Gaslams, and then you still have those guys who cut a bunch of weight and they're like destroying people. Like, what's kind of your opinion on um, that? Do you think it just is a certain fighter, or do you believe everyone is going up because overall it's just these weight cuts were just never like. I think, to begin with. I think I think it's all individualized yeah. like that's it's, it's such a hard like you can't ever give like a, a hard answer on that because certain people do great with uh, with a weight cut and dropping down in weight like let's hear a perfect example like not saying he was a bad fight or anything but like Max Holloway yeah so Max Holloway went up to 55 he fought Dustin Poirier now yeah Dustin Poirier's a fucking savage yeah and he's a guy who came up from 45 yeah too, and like and, and Max is known for his boxing yes Max is known for his um, volume uh, volume boxing. boxing, but Poye was putting it on and put power. like put power on him, and then you could tell that's what did it. Yeah. But then Max drops down again, goes against guys like Calvin Cater, just everyone in general. And you've yeah. sparred with Calvin Cater, you know. How I actually good he didn't is. get a chance. You didn't get a chance. I, I was there. I was injured, but I was. Oh. He was at. He was at Bazooka, and we were we were working with him a little bit. I seen him. Yeah, he's he's he's, uh, he's slick. Man. He's very slick. He's a good boxer from Massachusetts too. Like really yeah. well known. Mickey Ward Golden gloves, you know? before. Like he was a. Yeah, he's, he's very a good. Golden glove guy. Um, yeah, so like it shows you that like yeah, Matt, it works perfectly for Max to drop down to forty five, and apparently he goes from about one eighty five to forty five. So you know this Ooh. was, this was a, yeah, he's huge, and so this was an interesting Big conversation for real. that Daniel Comey actually brought up with, with that Poirier fight was that 
you know, there is a difference between going up one time and then a guy who now is consistently has done it. Because we're forgetting Jorge started off at 45 too. And so what I'd actually like your opinion on DC said that let um, Max maybe get used to fighting at 55 a few more times. He would be way more powerful, way more... You, you would have been a real 55er as opposed to that. But you need time for your body to yeah, adjust. Yeah, that one-up right? jump, right? So, like, how do you think that maybe played a factor as well? Because I kind of agree with that sentiment that if I got to have five, six fights under my belt at the upper weight class, I would learn the things that can maybe give me that extra power. And Because I just don't see how it's good for him to cut from 80-something to 45. Like, I just sounds... He's doing it, but it's like, what's your opinion on how much weight he's cutting? Like, that's well, and that's a that's a shit ton of weight. It's huge. You yeah. see pictures of him after, yeah. and it's like, how are you getting this big, bro? It's like, like I'll even like I don't even get that. Like, like if I'm if I'm starting camp, I'll start camp at 180. Like, and I'm going to 55. 55, yeah. And like, yeah, him, him, that's insane. But it's it's such a it's such a weird one to understand because it's like he was going against Dustin Poirier. Yeah, and he like, went all five rounds. I think yeah, people, are, now we see Poirier is more than what we were giving yes. him credit for even before the contest. Give him fights. someone else, man. Like, I, th- I think Max, I think Max. Like, he won that belt. I, I, th- I think Max fucks up a lot of other people in the at top 55. 10. At yeah. 55. Oh, God, I, yes. think, I think he kills it there. But you go against a savage. But, like, that's a good point that uh, Cormier brought up. It's like, give him a, let him, let him, uh, yeah. let him, let him wet his feet a little bit. Because there's got to be a difference in your, your understanding of that extra 10 pounds on how to maybe gain more power. That, you know, it's your first time you just worry about making weight 55. Or, like, he's basically saying poorie has gotten to learn how to, you know, do his strength training in the mix of being a 55. That's where the power, because he's huge. Yeah, now. you have to you have to be at that weight for a while. You have to let your body get used to it is what I think. Yeah, because he, he's a huge 55 now. The idea of Poirier making 45 sounds crazy now. Like, Well, what's the what's the most amount of weight uh, you've helped someone cut? It, it had to be, I had a, I had a, an older guy, older gentleman. He was he was fighting six weeks. In six weeks, I think he needed to cut thirty five pounds. What weight class? He was he was a bigger he was a he was a he's a bigger bigger boy. Like he went from like, he had to uh, drop like 35, 35 pounds from like two hundred five to something. So to like down. yeah, like, like uh, a welterweight basically one seventy five. Yeah, one seventy five. And basically, I was just I was like, dude, like, are you gonna do this either way? And he goes, Yeah, I'm gonna do this either way. And I'm like. All right, I'll fucking I'll help you the yeah, best I can. Like, I see what like, you're saying. Because you already brought me in. Yeah, like, you brought me in. I can't say no now. You already and, consulted him. You're and like, he's either gonna do it without you or not. So you might as well try to. I'm sure to you take it best. as a challenge too, right? I do. I did at the time, but now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, you, we're we're. It's not just like a competition where you're getting on stage and like kind of like flexing. flexing. And I'm not and I'm not ripping on that. The fitness I'm not, competition. I'm not people, ripping yeah. on fitness because that's a whole different discipline as well. That's oh insane. yeah, they, they that's a different type too. of nutrition. That yeah. Oh yeah, I have a lot of respect for those they, guys and brutal, girls man. too. But it's one of those things where now you're dealing with like hits to the head. Violence. Yeah. Yeah. Hits to the head and like we have to we had to bring his calories down so low, and like he had to just kept he kept dropping he kept dropping he he uh, adhered to everything. It was amazing. But it was just it was just mixing and matching properly. Like he had to get the exact calorie amount, exact amount of protein to make sure he's not losing too much muscle. But he still had to lose. He had to lose a lot of muscle still. Yeah, it's, it's not all fat. Drop down. Yeah, you can't just drop down that much and think you're going to lose the ratio of what we want to. Usually is like 80, 20, 90, 10 for a bigger dude. But with him, it was probably going to be like 60, 40, 50, 50 because no. we had to drop so drastically. drastically. Now, I know you're, you're obviously you fought. So you understand the difference between like. You know, getting a, a 185er to lose 35 pounds isn't the same as a 145 or a 25er. Do you have any type of rule that you have with certain, like, for instance, you got this guy down. Would you, have, like, if he would have came to you six weeks out saying, um, what, you 160, let's, would no, you? No, no, like, let's say, realistically, no, but, the heaviest I'd get, let's say 152. No, but, I'm what, cutting what, down what to 125. What I'm asking specifically is, what like, would you say to a 25er who comes to you with that big of a weight cut? Would you have been, like, just, like, how would you have handled that same because there's a huge difference between cutting just to 75 and then his that's a huge percentage of his body weight, 35 pounds. Like, mm-hmm. have you ever had anything where do or do you have some type of rule where you say, hey, Yeah, man, do you ever you, cut anyone off and be like, no, I at can't this help. weight class, I can't even I can't even be involved for what you're trying to do, right? Um, I've I've had people come to me, I've had people come to me where I've I've recommended that they speak to the promoter and yeah. jump up a little bit because I try to tell them I was like, we we can't go there. But my question to like let someone that would come to me from 160 <laughs> to 125, I'm like Give me your let, let's walk through your last three or four fight camps. I want to know what you started at, what you were eating, how you dropped down, how was the weight cut? Like, did you get down to twenty five at Before. an optimal level? And can you do it? Like, tell me what we can do because if he's if he's on a full stomach, if he's eating like twenty six, twenty seven hundred calories like a day, over like two fifty hundred grams of uh of carbs, we can work with that. He's yeah. got fiber in it. He's, he has salt. Okay, okay. So you're just big because you're big, right? Yeah. It's like we can knock off 10 exactly. easy. 
if but you're if this that. dude comes to me and he's like, I'm just depleted. I eat and you're like already calories. shredded and you're 160. Yeah. Like, no, sir. Yeah. No, sir. It's not going to work. I would be like, we, we got to talk to the guy and try to get that. Try to get the try to get you up a weight class. Or I don't know. If, I don't know if I want to help them because I wouldn't want to like be a part of that and be like, shit, man. Like, yeah. I, I just don't. I don't want to see someone die. So you brought up an interesting thing about yeah. asking yeah. asking them a question about um how optimal they were. Like I, as somebody who's helped guys fight or as a coach, a lot of times I don't think guys understand what that even means. Like, have you ever had a situation where somebody says, "Yeah, I was, I felt great," and then you realize, like, no, you weren't. Like, you know, maybe in their mind they were good at this weight cut, or they, you know, and a lot of times they don't realize like you weren't optimal. Like, because the word optimal means totally different thing to totally different people, right? Like, you can think you're optimal until you get in the ring with a guy like Max Holloway who has cardio for days, or a Khabib. Yeah, you then you realize, like, oh, I'm not as optimal as I thought. Right, you learn that sometimes you by getting be a good beat enough up. fighter that you have success even fighting at a, at a depleted level. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so like, have you ever had that where you like the guys like, yeah, I was fine, and you realize like, oh, no, you weren't. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm just... you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah, all exactly. It. Right. So, so it's like, so most guys are like, yeah, I felt great in the like a lot of teams I get is like, like, oh, they I asked them about their previous uh, fight camps. I felt good. I felt good, and like they work with me. They're like. Well, you give me this much carbs? I can eat this much food? Yeah, I was yeah. like, fucking eat it, please. He goes, yeah. I don't know, man. I'm too big. I'm like, no, you're not. Yeah. I'm like, you're good. And then like after a couple of weeks goes by, they're like, I feel incredible. Yeah, they realized they oh, were never fine. optimal. You were just tough. You know, a lot of guys are just tough. Like mm-hmm. to your point about cutting the weight, like a good weight cut doesn't mean just because you made it. Sometimes you're just tough. Sometimes you've just been cutting weight your whole life and you assume you're supposed to always feel like shit. I used to just associate that with cutting weight. That I'm yeah. supposed to feel like shit. Yeah. This, is, this is supposed to be terrible. I'm supposed, supposed to, to be terrible, yeah. hate fighting when I cut weight. I'm supposed now, to starve. I'm supposed to shrink my stomach. And yeah, and then now you kind of learn that, like, oh, up. no, you can lose a good amount of weight and actually still be happy, you know, do a podcast while you can sell well, me, like, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm happy, yeah. <laughs> but I was going to ask you, um, have you ever tried IV? Because I've done that twice for a weight cut. Oh, man. I've, I've never done IV. No, I've... You know what? It gets it gets the it gets a good amount of sodium in your body, which is obviously that's something that you're losing during the water cut. Like your body is just depleting it of sodium, especially on fight week when you take off sodium about three days before weigh-ins. So obviously you're 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 putting yourself through that. You're getting rid of your electrolytes, so you got to get that back in, right? So yeah, I've, people have done IVs. I've heard many people do it. I've never done it. I don't know. What what does it feel? What does it, it feel? Does like? feel I'm not gonna amazing. lie. It First time I, I did it, like I watched myself getting bigger. Yeah. Like, so like I, I sat, like, I sat in like a chair. It was with, like uh, I think Jesse Arnett. It was you know Jesse Arnett. He was also fighting. We were like sitting in a chair, getting the IV done, and you're eating too. So you're snacking on all this food and stuff. And there's a mirror there, like from the hotel, and you can literally see yourself like Your muscles feel. It's wild. Like it's wild watching it. Like you see your veins get thick, and as your veins get thicker, your muscles like start to you like feel like a superhero, literally, like being hooked up to yeah. your, your, you're like, your you're machine. You're like literally like, like and, I'm, and you're like I'm literally like just growing. You know, it's like weird. It's really like it's a weird feeling. I've done it twice, but they since they made it illegal, it's like um, yeah, it's kind of better. Like I told I him, it's better to just do it without. If you ever yeah, get that big bother. call, you don't want to be relying. But that was on like that. back in the years when everybody was kind of doing it. So I just. It's just the same thing. You just get on the program with like, okay, if these guys are doing it, it gives them an advantage, then I'm going to do a two type of thing with the IV, right? Yeah, no, it's and it's one of those things. Where, same thing with like weight cuts, right? When you when you cut weight to get to a smaller weight class because you're a stronger dude, if that's yeah. what everyone's doing, let's yeah. all do it. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's why I'm at fighting at yeah. 25 and not 35. Yeah, you could easily fight at 35. Uh, so, Matt, tell, um, tell people, we're going to put your Instagram tag at the bottom, uh, but where else can people find your material? Like, you know, what website? Like, where else can people reach out to you? Because we know a lot of guys who... Um, ask us these type of questions that you know are gonna need. That I'm not qualified to answer, especially here in Toronto. And I know you do stuff with people even outside of Toronto, obviously. So where can people find more of your material and reach out to you and stuff? Yeah, so uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now TikTok. Oh, all oh, bearded bites. I'm yeah. I'm jumping on the TikTok. Thing, no, it, you know we're, gonna, we're actually gonna be doing that here soon. You know too. what? It's, I'm not it's gonna one, be doing any dances. But no, like. no. You know, it's one of those things where it's you gotta <laughs> you got you gotta gain like the you gotta gain like more of a fan base, and this is gonna help grow a business, right? Yeah. I'm all about growing a business. I'm not. I'm not, I just don't want to like. I don't. I don't want to obviously like dance around like Gen Z, but whatever it is, right? So, <laughs> but, I do this awesome. but who knows, right? But who knows? But that's what I mean. So I, I'm getting all. So it's basically yeah, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, Twitter, all bearded bites. Type uh, type it in. You can get me on. They can reach out to me on beardedbites.ca. Perfect. And then they can reach out to me. It goes directly to my inbox, and I get back to them within like 24 to 48 hours. Awesome. Yeah, no, but the biggest one is like, yeah, DM me on Instagram, man. Like, I reach, I, I get to people right away. Awesome. And uh, I gotta know, uh, what's this you brought us, bro? You gotta tell us what yeah, this is. Yeah, before we bro. get out of here. Yeah, because I, 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 I wanna what, eat this, bro. This is, this is, this is little baby pancakes. Okay. Ba- the uh, protein pancakes. Main ingredients are uh, egg whites, uh, egg whites, uh, oat flour, and uh, chocolate protein. 
Awesome. And some actually, you know, the secret ingredient. Uh, what is it? Um, Betty Crocker. All right, Betty so is he, is, is he allowed to eat all of his serving? He's good. He's good. I just want to make sure because I, I, I didn't know if I had to with the dip sauce, with the dipping, with the dipping sauce, with you're the dip, get, with, with the frosting. I'm pancakes. eating this in one serving. Uh, you're, not, yeah. you're not getting none of my pancakes. Um, yeah. Well, guys, uh, so uh, grateful to have you on here. Um, this is a guy we're gonna be having on more. Um, you guys really need to reach out to him, especially if you're a fighter. And like I said, even other athletes, a lot of you guys aren't eating properly, even as football players. I know a lot of guys who don't focus on diet the way we do. This guy can help you a lot. Um, like I said, bearded bites. Power uh, lifters. All those, anyone that's got to make weight for a competition. And then perform, have a competition after. And if you just want to look good for the summer, right? You got a show coming. Um, so you got, if, you, if you got body dysmorphia. Yeah, there you uh, go, baby. All, those, <laughs> all fighters do, we just haven't made it. Uh, but I'm Andrew the Beast Tyson. I'm Balkan Boy. I'm Matt Special from Bearded Bites.